Hey guys, Brian here. Welcome back to this week on this old mater. The uh, first gen's got a fuel pressure problem. We got uh, an event coming up this week where I'm going to go dyno this thing to see how close to 400 horse it is. And I uh, decided to put a fuel pressure gauge on it because I thought maybe it wasn't running quite just exactly right. And turns out I'm right because got five pounds when it's idling. First, I have mean, the fuel filter's plugging up, so I put a new fuel filter on it and it didn't help in any. So, one the issue. The issue is this pump that's sweating a little bit of fuel is probably also bad in the inside because it won't make nothing. When you get under load, it just goes down to zero. Uh, if it could read vacuum, I'm sure it's pulling one, but the gauge only reads pressure. But regardless, it takes virtually nothing to suck it to zero. So, I'll show you on the data log file uh, what that looks like. Then we're going to fix this thing. So, this run was made with the uh, stock lift pump. And you can see that 42 pounds of boost there was showing zero fuel pressure. The blue line being in the fuel pressure line, so it's making about 5 psi until you made a load on it and then it would just go to zero so totally inadequate being able to keep up so this is going to be my fix is a power driven diesel hot rod modified fuel pump no idea what's hot rod or modified about it uh, it's probably just a stock one for a coming C series who knows, maybe they changed something about it. And dug around in my scrap pile, found a stock fuel inlet and a fuel bowl to chop the plate off of because you gotta have a spacer to make it work right. Uh, this is off the factory fuel heater on a second gen. So, nice, just a spacer for my application. But it's free, so I don't have to buy nothing. This is a budget operation. We're just fixing. No idea. This uh, appears to be half inch pipe thread on the inlet. Of course, this hose is way too big. So I'm going to have to get a reducer. I'll put a reducer in here to go down to 3 8 which is what the line is on my truck. Might starve this thing, but it probably needs starved anyway because you're not supposed to use these on VE pumps because they'll make too much pressure. Of course, I can find no published values for what fuel pressure this is supposed to actually make, so I really don't know how much pressure it does. It may be just fine the way it is, but I'm gonna have to tee in a fuel pressure regulator to start it up and find out what kind of pressure it actually does make in the application before I know whether or not I can do away with the regulator or I have to keep the regulator. So it's pretty straightforward. If you can change the tire, I'm sure you can bolt a fuel pump on the side of the block. So let me crawl underneath here and get the old one off and see about getting this stuck on and we'll see what I have to do for plumbing stuff and we'll take a look. But. Hopefully you can see good enough down in there. There's the factory lift pump. Early style. That's the screw in fitting. We're gonna rob putting the other one. Oh, it appears to be quarter pipe, so I have to use a quarter to half adapter to hook that up. And maybe I can make that stock fuel line work, I don't know. But if not, I got another fuel line off of another truck that I'll saw up to make the return out of. Uh, this truck does still have the insulated cover on the uh, rocker box there. Well, not really rocker box, but I guess it would be the uh, cam lifter galley. Uh, that tin cover covers up where the cam board or where the lifter boards are and the push rods. So I guess it's a push rod cover. And no doubt that's an area of noise on these engines, so they put a noise dampening 
cover on it to quiet them down some. I doubt it helps. But they must have thought it was worthwhile. Give it that gasser feel. So I might have to trim it a little bit. We'll see how that goes. So I'm going to get the old one off and we'll see about getting a new one on. That's the upper end right there so I can get that banjo bolt out. That's the fuel pressure plug. Channel D on the bank side dash. There they are. Get them in one shot together. Come on. Stock, high pressure, racy, modified, supposed to be the Mac Daddy. We'll find out. This is not a Mac Daddy application, so use at your own risk. But that's what I'm going to do. If I was really going Mac Daddy, I'd run a half inch fuel line back to the tank, put a half inch pickup in it to take advantage of all this, but we're just going to choke it off. And put that fitting there in there, let it suck through that 3 8 and see what it'll put out. Don't know if that'll work here or not. We'll find out in a minute. So, thanks to Rule King, I have a fuel pressure regulator rigged up. So, be in, pressure out, fuel return back to the tank, and that ought to regulate the fuel pressure coming out of the pump so it don't blow the seal out. So I've just cut the factory line coming from the injection pump to the head, and I'm going to put this in between it. Well, there it is. It's on there. You'll notice there's a T in the fuel inlet side. I had to route the return back to the fuel inlet because for whatever reason my return back to the tank couldn't handle that much fuel. I couldn't get the pressure to regulate. So I just ran it back into the inlet side and now I'm able to keep the fuel pressure down. I got it set like 15 pounds idle. And it goes up to 20 or so when I rev it up. Under load, I'm sure it'll go the other way. We'll have to see how that does, but for now, that's it. There's the uh, T handle to adjust the fuel pressure. Regulator sticking up there. So, it's plumbed in. We'll have to wait for the silicone to dry and fire this thing up and see how it does. Hopefully, that cures the oil leak. I couldn't get the seal up with two gaskets. I don't know if it's because uh, the gaskets weren't exactly the right stamp or if it's just the poor machining unflat surfaces of the spacer plate and that fuel pump. But hopefully the high Lamar will seal it up and do the job and this thing will be ready to go. I'll find out tomorrow. Well, event's over, made it home no problems. I didn't get a chance to really test out the fuel system other than the fact that it was on there because I uh, only got two dyno runs and instead of three like we were supposed to because it was having to start late in the day because it was raining this morning. There it is down in there. And there's the fuel pressure regulator. So now I got fuel. So the bank side dash was easy to add the additional fuel pressure sensor to. And here are the dyno results. So 958 torque, 354 horse, uh, above 350 horse from 1950, I mean, really about 19. That'd be 19 and a quarter to 
so that's the way I had the fuel pressure set when I was running on the dynamometer. Basically, it was at eight pounds or so at the beginning, and it was almost going to zero again under load on the run. So, I no doubt need to set up the regulator. 41 pounds of boost is already down to a pound and a half. And 38 pounds of boost is like a half a pound of fuel pressure. So a little adjustment to the fuel pressure regulator and setting it up in the middle PSI range. There you can see it cured the fuel pressure problem. So now running 40 pounds of boost or so or in the uh, able to maintain fuel pressure of 12 pounds roughly. Why I had it set. So I'm liking that. We're idle's not real high, and as the RPM's coming up, the pressure comes up with it. I'd like to boost reference this so it followed it even more. But uh, sample's also a good thing for a daily driver, so I'm satisfied that that's working okay. And when let off of it with the RPMs up, uh, so is it 2800 RPM? It's uh, got spiked up about 20 psi and then came back down, but no issues there, no worries. 20 psi, the injection pump can take that no problem and not blow the seal out. So I'll probably leave it set there. For now, anyway. So a little bonus info for you on this. Uh, so I was just noticing that the this particular turbo does really good up to about 2200 RPM. That's the crossover point where the turbine uh, pressure exceeds the boost pressure. So this over here where it's almost making 50 pounds of drive pressure at 2800 RPMs and in the 30s or so for boost. So yeah, 37 pound of boost and 47 pound of drive. That's 10 upside down. That's not good, but still making 13 pounds of fuel pressure. So that's a lot better than it was. And see, this is the Manifold air density, which peaks around 2100 RPMs at 250 pounds per thousand cubic feet and kind of stays in that 250 range, falls down to 240 or 230 by the time you get up to 2800. Yeah, obviously I've started lifting out of it there, so I really can't count that, so yeah, stays about 240 through the run. So it's just out of air there, the compressor can't do any more, but I run this small compressor because that's what I want for the twin setup, so this thing's really got it down here where I want it to be for my highway RPMs, because I'm going for straight performance. I like this thing to run real good where it drives it. And this is in that interstate kind of 60, 70 mile an hour range is down here. So under two grams going down the interstate. So, just a little bonus for you.